I'm a novel who make a stand in the navy. Can't you see me in the navy? Can't you protect your motherland in the navy? We want you. We want you. Hey, we'll get deeper into the character animator and how to set up the character and all the performance elements that is required. Let's go ahead and open the rig window and see how things are set. Let's concentrate only on the front view today, so let's ignore this. If we drill down, we can see arms on top, arms on bottom, head and body as a separate groups. And the reason why we want to group arms together is because we want arms to be attached to the body and we want arms to be independent in order for them to be working properly with MIDI controller. But we want the one group above it to be not independent in order for the connection for the shoulder to the body to be proper. Also, when it comes to the shoulder, make sure that your point is at the appropriate place, not somewhere here in the middle because when we will be rotating our arm, it will be rotated around this point. So this should be a shoulder, put it where the shoulder is supposed to go. This layer also is supposed to be independent and has a transform behavior assigned to that. And transform behavior is what the controller is going to use to actually put the hand up and down. Do the same for the both arms. When we drill down, we can see that we have the piece of art for our shoulder and the rest of the arm is a separate group because we want wrist to be together with the forearm. And once again, it's independent and has a transform behavior assigned to that with the same idea of this point means that arms will be rotated around this point. We drill even more down, once again, same idea, independent transform behavior for the wrist. And this basically means that we have three transform behaviors to control shoulder, forearm, and the wrist. And we can control one of our arms and we replicate it for the second one. From this point, we have the head that just marked as a head and it's pretty much rigged normally. One thing that we want to show is ears. Ears are independent because otherwise the movement of the ears affect the head too much and they are fixed to the head. Otherwise, we can see some gaps here when they're moving around. Uh, this point is not relevant for me, but we also have a bunch of dangles and drag gears in order for me to re-record re some of the ear movement. Also, when we start using the dragger, I don't know if there is a way to actually let it go during performance other than refreshing the scene. So only replayable is appropriate here. And I don't really like much when I start pulling it during the live stream because there is no way to get out of it. Right eyebrow and left eyebrow both have transform behavior assigned to them in order to control it with a MIDI controller. And this point should go all the way where the left of your eyebrow is supposed to be for the left side of your character because your eyebrow is gonna move this way mostly and here almost no movement, right? So if we rotate around this point, it's gonna be better behavior than if we just gonna push all the way up and down. So if we rotate around here, it will be more natural eyebrow behavior. All right, so let's see if we can make sense out of all those controls. Let's go from left to right. We can control our position on X axis which would move the character essentially left to right on the y-axis that is up and down and all that is going to translate essentially where the character is going to live on the screen at the end so you can see the window we just overlay the full window on the screen or we can use part of the window but yeah i use just the full screen so the character is really traveling around. The way you do it is you find out the values that you want by opening behaviors over here. So in this case, we are interested in our main transform behavior because it's going to transform all puppet. And we have our position on X and we just find, okay, here's the maximum positions that we want in this area. And we just go from left to right and say like, hey, okay, 587 maximum and minus 547, 555 minimum. 
and we just go from there. From this point, we get into something more interesting because we have eyebrows and this knob can control this, which is rotation to the opposite direction for the, our eyebrows. And this creates this cool effect of, hello. <laughs> In addition, we can move the eyebrows around the axis of rotation, as well as moving them up and down a little bit. And we can have this and we can combine the two controls in case we want to have something more interesting with our eyebrows. Because this way they are raised and we can do this way. And when they are tilted, we are on a different category. And we, if we are start shifting the eyebrows to more angry ones, this can get completely different look based on whatever we have in right now. That's that fish. Okay. After we finish playing with eyebrows, we can cover this. One of the things that we implemented is to be able to snap to the different position. And we have the button that plays the role of the slider from 0 to 100%. And when we press it, we have the position of X, Y, and scale setup, as well as rotation. And when we let it go, and rotation is set up always to zero in order for our character to always snap to the proper rotation. So in case we are somewhere here, we can snap back to the proper place. And the second button is really showing how the rotation can be different based on uh, whatever we want it to achieve. And in this case, we can get the 30 degree rotation to get us way into the middle of the screen and additional bonus is that the ear is getting this weird hang that's kind of fun but only in case of the low gravity so we were kind of looking for the exact position where this happened your mileage may vary and let's confirm that if we get the ears back the effect is different now and this is easy just set up multiple position x position y scale and rotation and assign it to the slider or the button. If it's a button, you'll have to click in and out. With a slider button, you can just press it and unpress it. I like it better. One more bonus thing that we have uh, right now is uh, this <laughs> animation, which is just increasing the parts of the body, the bunny, to make it weird look in case we are getting confused. Oops. We can also combine it with the arm movement, which also gives a little bit of an interesting effect. Which give us a good segue into the arm movements themselves. Arms are rigged both separately, as we mentioned before, for the shoulder, wrist, and forearm as well as the arms together so really let's review how that works so we have one slider to control both arms and we just reviewed our joints in the very beginning and how they attach together and all we do is we find this transform behaviors over here we grab the rotations we put it here and we just figure out the values of where we want our end position to be. So where we start from, where we finish, and we just set up multiple things that we want to achieve. And remember, for some things, you don't have to use both arms. And in case one is remaining on the same place, because it's not some pre-recorded art and it's a live position, you can just continue adjusting it based on where you are without moving all the other body parts. And this is where I would really prefer this option of have relative rotation and not absolute. So we can have no jerk from this position when we set it up with some other button and just have it right away. But I don't see how this can happen at the moment. But even in this way, we can really 
move a lot our character. And uh, the arms are really about all about setting up different values for these rotations. So you can play with it more and more. <laughs> and from this point, uh, it's all about just understanding what sort of minimum and maximum positions we want to have for the different arms in the different situations. Last thing is just a simple changing breathing per minute from 15 to 50. Which is going from this breathing to this. And we also have another thing, which is sometimes we want to hold the breath, and this would be... <laughs> and we change a little bit of position for the eyebrows, because this way we can continue to perform with the face, but, but it will just react differently, so the eyebrows favor more raising position. We can also do it with the transform behavior to break some specific surprise expression, which probably would be more favorable since we are rigging everything else in here. The last thing that we have here is post oppose movement and gravity strength that we did not really cover. You can see out here wind direction, wing strength, and gravity strength is attached to the ears and whiskers. Oh yeah, whiskers even have the separate one, so this one specifically for the ears, because we want to be able to move our ears, and this way it's very easy to achieve. And post-to-post -post movement is what allows us to snap between this uh, snappy mode like that. And, for example, something more smooth, where we just can be more groovy, which is more useful if you want to do some dancing and things like that. So, there's a maximum where I move my head and the bunny just snaps the place where it's following me with post-to-post -post animation and we can basically remove all post-to-post -to, -post to have more smooth movement. Movement. Cheers.